grew up watching these guys. 11, 11, that's okay. Play together all day long, let's go. So we got Joe Namath, Roger Stalbrook, Dan Faust, John Elway, and Jim Kelly. At first, he oh, dives oh, inside oh, the five yard line. There's just so many parallels and so many things that connect us. They have upset the Baltimore Colts. The St. Louis Rams are the world champions. I'm just like a little kid at a candy store. I'm going to sneak in and sit down and, and listen to all the stories. It's going to be awesome. So we're here celebrating the 100th anniversary of the NFL, here with uh, some of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. Joe Namath, Tim Kelly, John Elway, Roger Staubach, Dan Fouts. This is awesome for me. I grew up dreaming about playing in the NFL, watching you guys. Who were those guys that you watched growing up that kind of inspired your dream to play in the NFL? And I'll start with you, Mr. Namath. Well, that's Joe, first of all. <laughs> uh, Otto Graham, I, I admired Bobby Lane. Bobby Lane on the quarterback sneak, pushes his way across, standing up, and the Lions leap in front, six to nothing over the Browns. And that guy just to your right there, Roger the Dodger, Stallback. Play together all day long. Stallback looks like he might take off. Got away from one. Roger. He's going long. Pearson makes the catch at the five. Touchdown! What you believe it? Roger, you are something else. Yeah, man, those are three of the cats I watched. When I grew up, I was a Steeler fan, so my hero watching was uh, Terry Bradshaw. When I was a teenager, they won their four Super Bowls. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the champions of the National Football League for the fourth time. Off the field, there's only <laughs> one guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Namath. Don't want one of those fur coats. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the pantyhose and all those things. Well, I, you know, heck, I, again, I'm like Jim in the fact that I'm in awe of the guys I'm sitting here at the table with and, you know, really made the position what it is today. And, and uh, you know, I was a big, huge Cowboy fan, so Roger was a big, you know, uh, my idol when I was growing up. You know, not with the Cowboys, but how we played the game and, and uh, you know, kind of my game's a little bit tailored after his. I had the ability to get out and move around a little bit, and I think Roger started that. I had a chance to play against Dan late in his career. We were always trying to catch him because he's throwing those touchdown passes. <laughs> Bounce back. He drills one. Touchdown, Chargers! I was still in the Navy watching Joe Namath change the whole league when they uh, they won the big game there in Super Bowl three, right? And it was, it was a big deal. John and I have talked back and forth yeah. before, and. I admired him, uh, the way he played. He, yeah. he ran. You know, people criticize my running sometimes, and but I, I tried to uh, do it under control. Well, I was lucky uh, growing up because my dad was the voice of the 49ers, Bob Fouts. I got to know Y.A. Tittle. Tittle throws, going downfield, he has a goal run, he goes up, he's got it! But the guy that influenced me more than anybody was Johnny Unitas, and I was fortunate enough one year in San Diego, he was traded to the Chargers my rookie year, and uh, for some reason he took a liking to me. And you know, as long as I kept buying him beers, I was in good shape. So, uh, but he taught me so much about the nuances. You know, reading this way, read that safety. His where is he? Where's that corner? Uh, and then if you think about the hurry up offense or or the timing routes, Unitas had a big part in the development of all those things. And the fact that I could be in the same locker with Johnny U. I yeah, hear you. It was fantastic. Mahomes spinning right. Touchdown! Rogers Lane goes deep down the middle. Yes. Touchdown, Green Bay! A bullet from Deshaun Watson. Touchdown! Seahawks! Rock and roll! Another spectacular throw. You know, we're here we're out talking about how great we were and everything. <laughs> and there's so many entertaining quarterbacks nowadays. And the guys that can run and guys with great arms. What has impressed you guys about this young crop? The athleticism, again, of the animals, so much bigger, stronger, faster. I think the training methods are so much better over the years. These guys are spending so much more time honing their skills in the off season. It's faster, it's quicker. Uh, the shotgun, getting the ball out of there quickly has changed the game. I think the game is really good today. I, I really feel I could play in the game today, too. Uh, the rules, you know, you're not supposed to hit people past a few yards now. <laughs> but it's still, back in the old days, you know, I'd be getting ready to throw the ball, and all of a sudden, Drew Pearson would be 
cold cocked in the middle of the field, you know. So some of the rules would be fun to play today. And you've got to be able to, as a quarterback, you've got to transfer your confidence to your teammates. And it's not just about your arm, it's how you move around, it's your leadership. If the players do not believe in their quarterback, the way the league is set up today, they're in trouble. It's time to finish strong and hold up this trophy for this group, for our city. Let's go, baby, go from the top. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, four, three, four. I know I find myself gravitating to the Drew Brees and the Tom Brady's because I can associate with playing in the pocket, not moving out of side. And so it's just like, I, I love the way those guys play. Let's go! I take my hat off to Tom Brady. What a play by Brady! Nice job! Brady throws it to the end zone. Leaping! He's got it! He's got it! He's got it! Brady has got an amazing ability to read the defense quickly and going to the right receiver. I mean, because you don't have a whole lot, lot of extra time anymore. Well, the other part of it, he's been in the same system forever. Bingo. And, yeah. if, and if you think of your career, your career, your, you were in the same system. And that means, you know, the saying, coach on the field, well, no kidding. <laughs> he's smarter than the coach on the field yeah. because He's been in that huddle, he's been in that pocket trying to get it done, but he knows how to do it because he's been yeah. there before, he's seen everything. You know, from what I've surmised after watching Tom, he's had some great opportunities because of his team and his experience, and he's owned up. He has stepped up. He's answered that challenge more times than anybody, and he's brilliant. And if you right. gotta say who's the best of all time, well, Given the numbers being the championship, Tom is. Yeah. But still, you go back, man. I mean, Montana was special. Bradshaw was special. No you know, these guys are special. What a pass by Kurt Warner. Damon goes back to pass. He's in. Touchdown. Get in there. Get in there. Tomac drops back to pass. That's up. Pass to him. Close. Touchdown. Come on. Run out of the brakes now. This could be the year of Jim Kelly. It really could be. So talking about the history, talk about people that influenced us. Take me back to your first NFL memory, whatever that was, going to a game, watching something on TV. What was your first NFL memory? You know, uh, actually with the two leagues, there was really my first memory is some people didn't like us. And the veterans on the Jets didn't like them. And there was an animosity between the two leagues. What would it take to uh, end the uh contention between these two leagues and to achieve a common draft, in your opinion? Well, I may shock you, Bill, but I think it's going to take a more mature part on the part of some of the NFL people. Otherwise, going back, it was watching Johnny U. Uh, Sunday was always football day. and yep. There was just uh, one or two games on, but my father and I would sit in that living room and watch the games, and uh, as a youngster, I'd say pass or run, and that's it. I wouldn't say it's my first memory. So we're opening in Pittsburgh. It's my rookie year, and Jack Ham was still there. Mean Joe was still there. Jack Lambert's inside. Mel Blunt's still outside. Wow. And I, these are guys that now that I've watched and admired my whole life and, you know, the Super Bowl teams that they had. And so I go up to the line of scrimmage for the first snap, and I look up, and I see Jack number 58, Jack Lambert. He's got no teeth. He's slobbering. <laughs> And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, why did I ever want to be in this position? <laughs> it was the worst position I could have been. And I was like, you know, if, if any M was there and I could click my heels, get me out of here, I'd have got out of there. Jack Lambert, I, the Pittsburgh kind of <laughs> took it to us. He is hit by Jack Lambert. Lambert was there to get him. And I've, I've had, you know, I've had a few nightmares. My wife was worried about them, and it's usually I pictured Jack Lambert with no teeth there, looking over the line screaming. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he was a great player, but image. I tell you, you, I wish he was on my team, but yeah, I didn't yeah, like him. No, I know it. My first ever game in the NFL, and we're playing the Jets, and that's back in New York Stock Exchange with Mark Gasno, Marty Lyons, and Joe Klecko. Personal foul oh. after he tackled the quarterback. He's giving them business down there. <laughs> And I'm up calling and playing, and Joe Kletko comes across. Not one of my offensive line, linemen even moved, and he hits me. And he looks up, he didn't say anything except, boy, this is not the USFL. And I look up, yes, sir. <laughs> I was proud that I was able to make my mom and dad, my five brothers, proud. But when Joe Kletko, you know, he's that cough, you know, nose guard, he came across and he hit me so hard, and I'll never forget that moment. Well, it, it wasn't a traumatic experience, <laughs> but it, it was, uh, for me, kind of funny. Uh, we were playing the Broncos, and this is when fantasy football was just starting. You'll, li you'll like this, Joe. 
So I pick my team, and I've got Elway, okay? <laughs> and now we're playing the Broncos, okay? And, and I know that we got to score a lot because he's going to score a lot, and the more he scores, the better I get. You know, my, it's my <laughs> team, right? I'm just having a glass of water. He runs out of bounds, gives chase, jumps over our bench. As he's coming back, I said, hey, take it easy, will you? <laughs> I need you. <laughs> It was like the I think that was the last the time I jumped over the bench. <laughs> oh, you boy. took my advice. Yeah, <laughs> we had a good year, John. Thank you. It's cold. Here it is. Hey, up here, fellas. I was still in the Navy watching the Cowboys in the Ice Bowl. I mean, I'll never forget the Ice Bowl when Dallas uh, had a chance to beat Green Bay, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Bart Starr took him down at the end and then went the quarterback sneak and. And they, so they lost two years in a row to Green Bay. And the Green Bay Packers are going to be NFL champions for the third straight year. Well, my first recollection was actually watching you guys against the Broncos. 27-10, you won that game. And it was really how I fell in love with the game, was just watching you guys play, watch that Super Bowl. Would play the Super Bowl in my front yard, you know, get to halftime. I'd run out there, put a jersey on with whoever was playing in the Super Bowl, play it, come back in in the second half, and just watch the finish of the game. But yeah. that's how I fell in love with it was watching you play in that Super Bowl. What an effort, a 45-yard cut-down shot from Starbuck. I know we all look around and we, you know, we admire all the people at this table. Is there something about one of these other quarterbacks that you say, man, I wish I had that as a part of my game? But yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I wish I was as good size as these guys right here, too, and I wish I had Roger's uh, ability to move around like that. You did it better as well as anybody that's ever done it. That's that was, why we got that gold jacket. That was one of the things I admired. How old were you when you started your first game in the NFL? I was 27 as a 27 years old. I got into yeah. the league when I was 27 as well, something that I, I really admired yeah. about you. Well, I mean, I, I look at Jim. I think when, you know, we, with us being contemporaries and him coming out of the USFL and throwing the football as much as he did there, but then also going, you know, to Buffalo when you had the K gun and opened things up, you kind of started that there. and so. As a contemporary, it was, you know, fun for me to watch you and wish that I could be able to throw the ball around like you did. And yeah. I still think what we're doing today is a big part of what you did when you uh, when you started that back in the and, and that was that was fun because Marv allowed me to call the plays. And uh, I know that there's a lot of quarterbacks maybe nowadays, I'm not sure, back when I played, probably would love to have been able to do that. And when I heard of coaches sometimes not allowing quarterbacks to audible, that to me is nonsense. Why wouldn't you allow your quarterback, especially in times where, you know, the clock's running down and they're calling timeout, call your own play. Dan, your ability and timing back in the day and have a little bit of a connection with the Air Coriel, that's where Mike Martz, the greatest show on turf, but you kind of were the greatest show on turf before the greatest show on turf. Bounce back, setting up, he drills one, touchdown Chargers! A bounce, touchdown pass. Fouts, throws the path over the middle. He's got his win, man. Touchdown. I just remember thinking, gosh, he throws that bang eight so beautifully. You know, even when he backpedaled. You guys, like, it's like, I don't know how he does it when he's backpedaling out and sticking that foot, but just something that I admired and said, man, the way he gets the ball out on time, no matter what happens in front of him, was something that I looked at and said, man, I hope one day I get an opportunity to, to play like that. Work the middle, True. Work the middle on that. Throws it toward the end zone. Touchdown, San Diego. What a fantastic play by Jeff Kelly. He runs, he dives, he drives. Touchdown, Cowboys win. Elway leads the Broncos 98 yards. Rainbow's the far sideline. Caught by Isaac Bruce. Touchdown, Rams. Best in touchdown up there. He is looking. He is going to throw long for Don Maynard. And Maynard makes the cut. And there it is. The Jets have won the American Football League Championship. Phenomenon of the day is Roger Stombach. Just watch this game of hare and hounds. Stombach twists and turns, faints and fakes to avoid army tacklers. There's two games in my life that I look back was the most nervous I've ever been. The 1962 Army-Navy game was the most nervous I've ever been in any football game until we played in Super Bowl VI against the Miami Dolphins. Because we could not win the big game, and when we played in Super Bowl VI and won that game, 
I was a nervous wreck before the game. Coach Landry, even after the game, Walt Garrison had said, uh, you ever see Coach Landry smile? He said, no, but I've only been here nine years. Well, <laughs> he was smiling after that game being carried off the field because he got rid of that tag, you can't win the big game. Yep. So those two games are uh, the, the most I can reminisce about in my life. Yeah. You think this now takes the uh, onus off that we can't win the big one anymore? I would That's think so. Well, if it is, I don't know how you spell it, I'll tell you that. I mean, for me, it would be the same as, as Roger's talking about and the fact that we've been to three Super Bowls and and really got each one got progressively worse. And, and uh, in 1997, uh, we were able to get back. We're going back to the Super Bowl. We're going to play the Green Bay Packers again. We're 14-point underdogs. I called my mom after we beat Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship game. I said, hey, Mom, we get to go back to the Super Bowl. And her question was, do we really have to go back? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, again, to be able to go into that game, 14-point underdogs, they're defending champions. And I'll never forget John Moby knocks down Brett Favre's fourth-bound pass. And I'm running out on the field. We had to take one more snap to kneel it to be able to be world champions. And so that was the time that, uh, yeah. you know, I'll never forget. And, and uh, you know, we were able to do it the following year, but there was nothing like that first one to finally get that monkey off your back. There's one thing I want to say here tonight. There's only four words. This one's for John. Mine was uh, when I retired, I looked back on my career and thought about uh, the people I played with and known that we made it to four Super Bowls in a row. It wasn't just- That's phenomenal. It wasn't it just getting to four Super Bowls, it we did it in a row. And as we all know at this table to get there is very, very tough. But to be able to mentally get yourself ready after you lose two and then you lose your third one, because you're gonna hear all the negativity. You're gonna hear, oh, not the Buffalo Bills back there. But I think those games that we played, even though we didn't win, four years in a row we went back, we never, ever gave up. That to me put, still puts a smile on my face. Yeah, I would have loved to win one, two, but uh, just still proud of all the players I played with. Well, as my good friend, the late, great Kenny Stabler would call uh, me, Mr. Never Been to the Big One. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I have the Alpha Omega. The Alpha was being drafted, and the Omega is the gold jacket. Simple as that. And I know Johnny Yu is watching this somewhere today. I just want to say hi, John. Quit shaking your head. I am really here. Because <laughs> I know John Unitas. And Dan Fouts is no John Unitas. And for me, it's funny because a lot of times you're going to point to the Super Bowl win. I actually point to the Super Bowl with the Arizona Cardinals when I got a second chance. And the coolest part of that, that moment for me was that Nobody ever expected the Arizona Cardinals to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, there were even people in the organization when we were getting off the plane, they're going, really? Is this, is this <laughs> real? Are we here? So to be able to watch uh, a group of men that never thought they would be here, organization, ownership all the way down, was really one of the coolest moments. And in conjunction with that, I won the Walter Payton Man of the Year and was presented that at the game. So to have all that come together at that moment was probably one of the most memorable moments of my career. The goal is always to make the team first as a player and then to win the championship. And doing that on the earlier levels and then professionally with the New York Jets, man, and uh, being in the American Football League and having lost the first two championship games, there was some, not added pressure, but you know when you lose three in a row, uh, you lose a lot of respect from everyone. So we didn't put pressure on ourselves for that game, but that, that particular game uh, is certainly a part of my life that I'm thrilled with, and we did it, and I'm well, thankful. you had to win it because you guaranteed it, though. Namath has not been bashful this week, and he has said that the Jets are going to win. He doesn't even predict it. He said, I guarantee. Right. Are you talking about not putting any pressure on it? You guaranteed to the world you were going to win. That's a little bit of pressure right there. And afterwards, I was asked, what if we didn't win? And I didn't even hesitate. You get knocked down, but you don't stay there. You get back up. Had we lost that game, all right, we're going back to work. We're going to win it the next time. The New York Jets are the world champions. Welcome back, everybody. I am Eagle Hall of Famer Dan Fouts. We need to do it, so I'll, I'll sure, uh, I'll get it done. This one's for Pat! Now, I know what most of you guys are doing, but the old guy down there on the end, Mr. Namath, 
What have you been up to? Well, uh, I've been working out hustling a book. I, I've written a book. I figured uh, my life's going to be 100 years, and I got this uh, opportunity to do a book because of our 50th anniversary of winning the championship and all that. My life in four quarters, all the way my life in four quarters. And I'm only in just starting the fourth quarter. <laughs> I'm trying to ask Roger for some advice on what it's like going into that and running it. Well, fellas, this is awesome. I, I could sit here all day and listen to your stories. I respect all of you for who you are and what you've accomplished. I appreciate you all. It's been awesome spending some time with you guys.